So let's start taking the development of the demo a little bit further and implementing a connection pool. On implementing a connection pool, you'll notice that we've taken the performance up 10 times faster to over 3,000 transactions a second. Um, this order of magnitude, very often people will take great credit. Oh, I made the application 10 times faster, I'm a hero. But you'll notice that still we have actually inside the database a lot of contention and serialization, although we've managed to increase the utilization of the CPU and take the transaction rate up, there's a lot further to be done. Because you'll notice, if we take a look at this thing, this application is parsing every SQL statement. Now the reason why it's parsing every SQL statement is because the programmer has written a very simple application that dynamically builds a SQL string and then sends it to the database. This dynamically built SQL string is a classic screen scraping or web form scraping application where they take the contents out of a form, dynamically build a SQL statement, and send it down to the database. This results in what we would call a hard parse. And the hard parse of the SQL statement means that it's probably going to be a unique SQL statement, and it's not likely to find any match inside the Oracle shared pool, and so it won't be shared either. Okay, So we're going to take the full penalty of not only syntactically checking the SQL statement, semantically checking the SQL statement, we're also going to take the performance penalty of generating an execution plan for the SQL statement, and all the memory management associated with it. Just think about that. That's a lot of CPU that, again, is not being spent executing your SQL statement. It's just setting things up. One of the ways to perhaps think about this is we are effectively recompiling the application before we ran that. Imagine recompiling a C program every time you wanted to run it. You just wouldn't do that. You just learn to re-execute that. Having eliminated uh, the logging on and off to the database being the performance problem, you'll notice that uh, this application in itself um, is still not meeting the performance targets. Uh, we're only doing about 4,000, 3,500, 4,000 transactions a second. The response time has come down to about 18 milliseconds. Uh, but we have been successful in getting the database CPU busy, and we're running in user code, not system code. So let's start investigating the database for why are we not still not making the targets. Well, you'll notice that half the processes in the database that are running are on the CPU, which is great. But the other processes are all contending inside the database for memory structures inside the shared pool. Um, you can see latch row cache objects and latch on shared pool, and you're seeing library cache mutex. Um, and really, if we were to do the root cause of the problem, the answer is staring us in the face. We're hard parsing all the SQL statements that we send down. We're doing about 13,000 SQL statements, and we're hard parsing about 12,000 of them. And the reason is, again, we remember that this was an application that was thrown together really quickly, um, is that the programmer has not thought about cursors and has just done a classic screen scraping application and is just copying the contents out of the web form and make, building a SQL statement. So if we actually look at one of the SQL statements that are actually being ran inside Enterprise Manager here, you can see there's an update statement and they're changing a field, but you'll notice that for everything in the WHERE clause, it's a hard-coded literal value that had been pulled out of the web form. These using literal values will mean that every SQL statement we hear is, be is unique, is being hard parsed, which means we're doing a syntax check, we're doing a semantic check to see that it, uh, you're able to validate, correctly execute this SQL statement, and then we have to generate an execution plan and memory and manage memory structures inside the shared pool, which were the wait events you're seeing because the shared pool is a shared structure and so we have to manage concurrency to this. The challenge here is that the developer hadn't been using a concept called bind variables and had not been building them into the application. And as a result, this actual SQL statement is potentially SQL injectable if 
somehow in these escape sequences, someone had managed to inject into the field enough escape sequences, quotes and things, where they could actually start returning uh, additional data or updating additional data in the, in the base tables. So all they need to do is embed all one equals one into the SQL string, and of course, all the rows are impacted. So this is known as SQL injection and is a big security issue associated with writing screen scraping applications. And again, we're going to talk about the use of bind variables. This should be specified by the system architect or the development management team. If the programmer is left to figure it out themselves, they'll take the easiest path to generate a functional app. It doesn't mean it will perform or whether it's secure.